Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Kushbu and in this video we are going to see the question Pascal's Triangle. So let's quickly see what the question states. Given an integer num rows, return the first num rows of Pascal Triangle. In Pascal's Triangle, each number is the sum of two numbers directly above it as shown. So over here we have been given an animation that tells us how the Pascal Triangle is filled. What I can see from here is that the first and the last number in each row is going to be 1. The middle numbers are going to be addition of something. Now what that something is? That something is going to come from the above rows. So what are those indexes is the question. Now when you see this 2, this comes from the addition of 1 and 1 from the above row. Now. As you can see, this 2 is at an index of 1 for this particular row, considering that we are taking a 0 indexed list. So, this first index of the current row is going to come from the first index of the previous row and the 0th index of the previous row. This is something that I can take it from the animation that is given to me. So, now here is an example given wherein when num row is 5, this is the Pascal triangle that they are going to return and when the num row is 1, simply the first row is returned. So now let's go ahead and see some more theory on this Pascal triangle question and once we have understood what we need to consider in order to code, then we'll come back and code this question out. For simplicity, initially let's take a blank Pascal triangle and we'll fill in as we move ahead. So, we discussed that the first and the last element of the Pascal triangle is always going to be 1. So, let's first fill that out. Now, we are remaining with all these cells that we need to fill. And we also discussed that the answer for a current cell is going to come from the previous row. So, let's go ahead and mark these rows with some indexes. Now, I have taken a 0 indexed row count. But you can also consider this as a 1 index row count because this is going to be on level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4 and level 5 which is equivalent to a 5 row Pascal triangle in this particular case. So now this is going to come from the previous row is what we know. Now what are the indexes that we are going to take into consideration for this particular cell that we are going to find the answer for? is also something that we talked about in the question discussion in a very short way. So now let's see. This is going to be 1 plus 1 and the arrow over here denotes from where those 1s are coming. So given this that this is a 2,1 index, the answer is coming from, we can see from here that is 1,0 and 1,1. So what does that imply? That implies that the current value that is the value for this current index in a particular row is going to be from the previous row and the index to be considered for the previous row are i and i minus 1. Let's try to apply this for all the other values as well and see whether we are correct with this particular assumption or not. So moving ahead we go to this particular cell. Now this particular cell is 3,1. Does that come from 2,0 and 2,1 then? Let's see. So, this particular value is coming from 2,0 that is previous of i minus 1 and previous of i that is the first index of the previous row and that is correct. Again, let's go to the next value. So, this is 2 plus 1 which is coming from previous row ith column and previous row i minus 1 column which is 3 comma 2 is the index at which we are currently located. The value for which is coming from 2 comma 2 and 2 comma 1. Similarly when you go to the fourth row and the first index this will come from third row first index and third row zeroth index which is previous of i and i minus 1 and Let's go on and fill these two as well and these are filled with the same condition that we saw. 
So the only condition for Pascal's triangle is previous of i and previous of i minus 1. That is to see from where the values are coming and to put those conditions properly when you are coding it out. So now that we know how these values are getting filled, let's go ahead and code it out. So first, let's take the result variable in which we are going to store our Pascal's triangle. And then we'll take a base condition in which if my num of rows is equal to zero, I can simply return my result and I don't need to put anything into it. For the first row, I'll have a current row that is going to be a list of integers and it will only contain one single number which is 1. Now I need a previous row in one of the variables and then I can take the values from that previous row to find the value for the current row. For now the previous row is nothing but this particular row and now I will iterate for int i equal to 1 till the num rows, i less than num rows and now I am going to try and make the current row. So the first and the last numbers are always going to be 1. So first let's try the first one. So I'm adding the first one into it and then I'm going to loop. In this particular loop, I am going to iterate for j equal to 1. That is the first index in the current row is what I'm going to fill. Now, till what I'm going to go and I am going to go for j is less than i. So this particular thing is going to give me the second last index till which I need to fill the values in the current row. And the last value will always be 1. So let's do that. Now, what is the value with which I'm going to fill this particular index? So that will be adding a particular value in my current row, which is nothing but previous row dot get j plus j minus 1. So that is getting the current index in the previous row and current index minus 1 in the previous row. So this will add all the values which are not 1s. At the end we need to add or append 1 to this current row and that's it. So this will give me the values in the current row. And now I need to add this current row into my result as well. So that gives me the current row and now this current row will become the previous row for the next iteration. So let's do that as well. And that's it. Finally, just return the result. So that was about the coding part. Let's run this code and it's giving me a perfect result. Let's submit it and it got submitted. The time complexity for this particular solution is going to be the number of times this loop is running and which is equivalent to the number of items or indexes that we are filling in this particular Pascal's triangle and the number of values that are going to be there in the Pascal's triangle which is nothing but n square. So the time and space complexity also becomes n square. So that's all for this video guys i hope you like the solution and i hope you like our videos if you do it please don't forget to like share and subscribe and also hit that bell icon so that you get the notifications of whenever we post any video on our channel apart from that if you have any questions any doubt please do drop a comment and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible also, if you want us to make a video on a particular question that you have in mind, then please do drop that in the comments as well and we'll try to pick it up as soon as possible. So that's it for today guys. I will see you in the next one.